Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this episode, I'm going to walk you through the whole process of how I customize this Woodstock wind chime for a customer. They sent me a picture that they wanted to have engraved on both sides of the feather or the sail. That's the wood part that hangs down at the bottom. And they've asked me to engrave those logos on either side. So I thought, what a cool tutorial for me to walk you through the whole process of how I get that done. We're going to show you how to manipulate logos that customers sent you today. We're going to work in Adobe Illustrator and we're going to work in Photoshop. And we're going to even do some paint filling using a technique that I've shared in one of my other videos. So if that sounds like something you want to get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, and let's get into it on Laser Engraving 911. <laughs> Alright folks, let's begin here in Adobe Illustrator. So what I did was I created an artboard here and I laid out all the different assets that I had to make these final files right here. These are the two files that ended up going over to my engraving machine. This is what I used to engrave. So I ended up with the logos that the customer sent me, the trace outlines that I used to line up the feather or the sail. So let's zoom back out and I'll talk a little bit about what's what's going on here. The customer wanted this done was actually a group of, of friends of my wife who are very close to a lady who had, she just had her cats that she's had for a long time, unfortunately pass away one day after another. You can see here on the calendar, she drew those pictures uh, on each day when the cats, they got really sick over time and it was just really sad. I'm a cat guy myself and they wanted to do something nice for her. So what they did was a picture that she sent to her group of friends. They sent this to me. This is what I got as the engraver. And this is very common for sometimes customers to send you pictures of a logo or an image that they want you to engrave on something. And those pictures are taken at a weird angle or they're stretched out, and sometimes they can't retake the picture or uh, take a top-down picture. That is why we're gonna use Photoshop today to show you how I went from this skewed image, this is how the picture was taken, to a flat image like this before I did a live trace and ended up with this vector right here, which I cleaned up and then turned in to these right here. I wouldn't want to engrave these logos at a, at a slanted angle the way they were sent to me. I want to get them straight first. So I took a picture of the feather from the wind chime and I used the pen tool to trace the outline of the feather and draw a little circle just to indicate where that was so I didn't put the engraving over the circle. And what I ended up with after I engraved it and paint filled was exactly what you see here on the screen. So without further ado, we're gonna jump over to Photoshop and we're gonna talk about the perspective warp tool in Photoshop and how that can be helpful for you when you get images like that. So the Perspective Warp tool is a tool that I'm not sure if many people know about it. Uh, well, you, they know about it for stretching buildings out and other things in Photoshop, but it can also be used to uh, manipulate an image to where it looks like it was taken in a top-down position. And this works for all kinds of logos, and we'll do some examples here. So I was sent this image. So this is the only image I have to work with. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the image. We're gonna go to Edit Perspective Warp. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a little icon change there. And you wanna click somewhere on the image, preferably within the area that you're gonna try to straighten out and flatten and make it look like it was taken in a top down. Once you click once, left click once, you're gonna get this box. And what you want to do when you get this box is you're going to take the corners, these are movable corners, and you're going to bring them, and I'll zoom in here, you're going to bring these little nodes over to the corners of the area that you want to straighten. So I'm just taking my time here, I'm bringing those nodes over to the corners here, the best I can, all right? And then once I have that, you know, once I have those nodes in the corners where I want, I'm basically telling it what area I want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and up here in the left-hand corner, there's a button that says warp. 
and I'm going to click warp. And you might think, okay, nothing happened. So there's a couple of different features here. Uh, this one is, if you hover over it, it says automatically straightened near vertical lines. The next one is automatically level near horizontal lines. This other button right here says auto warp to horizontal and vertical lines. And this is the go back button. This is the forget about, <laughs> uh, this is remove warp. The middle one is cancel perspective warp. And then this check is when you have it the way you want it, you go ahead and hit check and that's it. So I'm going to zoom back out. And the first one I'm going to try is horizontal and vertical. And we'll just see what that does. Okay, so that was pretty amazing because what this basically does is this tool is a little bit fidgety sometimes. Uh, that pretty much did exactly what I wanted it to do. There's always going to be a little bit of like, you know, warpage, but for the purpose of getting this logo looking as it was taken with a camera straight overhead, straight down, that's about as good as you're going to get. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way and you have to adjust these nodes and as you adjust them you see once you hit note you can see you can start changing the perspective of what was going on so you can actually fine tune this to get it as flat looking as possible before you hit the check button if i take this node it's like i'm almost working with a 3d plane now it's very it's a very cool tool and it's very helpful for when you, you have this situation. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check button because I like this. And this is what I'm gonna work with here. So the next step after we're happy with the way we warped the picture is we're going to convert this to a black and white image because I don't want all this other stuff and I don't want to live trace a fully covered image. I just want to turn these two kitty paws into a black and white image vector that I can mess around with. So I'm going to go up here to image, adjustment, threshold. And with my threshold tool, I've talked about this in other videos. I just want to make sure that those two logos are nice and black. I can slide up. That's too much. I can slide down. I, I lost the heart there. I want the heart. I want the kitty paws and the M and the S. So I try to find that balance right there, right about there. And then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this as a PNG. I'm going to go ahead and save it in wherever you want to save it for your customer file. Let's go over to Illustrator and I'll show you how I can work with this now. So now we're back over here at Adobe Illustrator and we're going to open up our saved file that we just made in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File and there's our image. And I'm going to place it right there. I'm going to hold down shift so I can make it a little bigger. And I'm just going to select the image and hit image trace up here. And we're going to go ahead and trace that. And then we're going to hit expand. And now we've converted this whole image that we just made in Photoshop into a vector. I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to select a white area and then go to select same fill color and delete all the white okay i don't want any of this other stuff so now i'm just going to go through the process of getting rid of all the stuff i don't need so we broke that apart we've got more cleanup to do so now i'm just going to go through the process of cleaning up all this stuff that i don't need i'm going to get rid of this this looks good that looks ready to go select all that and hit Control g to group all that together now here comes the part where you've got to kind of get in there with your eraser tool and start erasing the parts that you don't need because I don't want that. Now I could like over redraw this or, you know, but I think the idea is that we want it to look natural, you know, like it was literally taken from that image from the calendar. So I'm just erasing the parts I don't need. This looks like a little funky right here. I might try to clean that up with the brush tool, the blob brush, and adjust my brush size just a little bit. Fix that a little bit. Maybe fix that part a little bit right there. And then we zoom out and we are good to go. So now we have our two kitty paws um, that we created and they will be ready to engrave. So now that we've done that, it's time to go over and finish the rest of the project. And that's how you use the perspective warp tool to take crooked 
pictures of logos, straighten them out, and use Live Trace so you can get to engraving. All right, now that we're back over in the workshop, we've got our blue painter's tape. You know I love that. We're gonna go ahead and mask off both sides of the feather. I got my little roller so I can flatten that tape and make sure it bonds really good. And as you can see, I'm using my X-Acto blade to cut off any excess. Go ahead and peel that off and then I'm gonna fold down the edges to make sure that the whole feather is covered because I don't want any paint getting anywhere other than in the engraving where I want it to. Over here at the epilogue, we'll go ahead and focus to the surface of the feather. And remember that trace line that we made in Adobe Illustrator? Well, I'm using center center engrave and throwing that trace line over to go ahead and trace the feather to make sure that I'm perfectly aligned and the engraving's gonna go exactly where I want it to go. And I have a 120 watt machine and I'm using about 60% power and 60 speed at 400 DPI. Go ahead and get that side done, flip it on over, do the little trace trick, put our other logo on the other side, and as you can see, the logo is landing exactly where it's supposed to. And we'll go ahead and let that finish. Take a look at it, see how everything came out, and you'll notice that I engraved just deep enough for it to hold the acrylic paint that we're gonna fill these logos with. So now that that's done, Let's go over to the paint station and get that working. All right, back over here. You guys have seen me do this before. I'm using acrylic paint to paint in the engraving that I just did. And the mask is not, the mask is allowing me to only fill the parts that I want to fill and not have any bleed over onto the feather itself. We'll go ahead and now that we've got that side done, I let it dry, go ahead and do the other side. And then we go through the process of peeling the mask off, which is pretty easy with this blue painter's tape. As you can see, the mask come right off. I went ahead and let both sides dry for about 30 minutes, not hours and hours. And then I go ahead and get that last little part with the S. And I have a little weeding tool that I just lift the edge up off and then peel that little last piece of mask right off. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just peel that mask off, get it all off of there. It's very relaxing doing that, actually. I love it when a good plan comes together like this. So we'll go ahead and get that final piece of mask off and that's what we end up with. Exactly what we set out to do. And as you can see, this is the final product. I think that the recipient is gonna be very happy and I hope that every time that her wind chime rings in the wind that she remembers her two little sweet cats that passed away too early. So if you got value from this video, you liked it, you thought it was awesome, make sure you leave a comment below, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And thanks for watching and until next time, we'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.